Nicole Rashad with the Investing News Network, and I'm at the final day of the Minds and Money Conference in Toronto, and I'm here with Peter Grosskop, CEO of Sprott. How are you today? I'm well. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Um, so how has the conference been so far? Do you have any highlights? Well, we just got here today, so it's uh, our first <laughs> hour or two in the building. <laughs> I would say it's a busy crowd as usual at these conferences. Okay, great. Um, now, both silver and gold came off kind of a, another tough quarter. Uh, which precious metal do you think kind of fared a little bit worse than the other? Well, I don't look at the very short-term performance between gold and silver, but I would say that we believe silver has a certain attraction to gold, which is it's a much smaller market. And when the factors come in that give gold um, a bit of a tailwind and, and gold starts to perform, silver usually performs better. It's just a smaller market and it gets squeezed quicker. Okay. Um, now, there's the idea of, that we've reached peak gold floating around and also um, that silver is primed to outperform gold. Do you believe either of these theories and how do you think that it will affect the precious metals? I don't really believe in the theory of peak gold per se because it's being used as a basis to say that's a really significant impact on the price. We don't think it is. Gold trades you know, probably $70, $80 billion a day. I don't think gold output has anything to do with the gold price. However, I do believe that gold has been produced in peak quantities and that going forward companies will be able to produce less of it. It's just harder to produce. Um, sorry, what was the second part of the question? Um, silver outperforming gold. Okay. Do you think that it's prime? I do. I do think that we're right around the corner. And the reason for that is I think that all of our indicators are that gold has reached a, um, a, a nadir of popularity. It is so unpopular right now as an asset class. It should um, hit a turning point fairly soon. And when it does, silver will, as I mentioned, go up a bit more than gold, I think. Okay, great. Um, just switching gears a little bit, sure. I was wondering if you have any tips on uh, the most cost-effective way to purchase silver and gold in the current market. Okay, well, that is getting into the core part of our business, so happy to talk about it. Um, well, look, I, I think that the gold market needs to innovate, and we have spent a lot of time and money investing in digital gold, which I think is just as important to the gold business as the ETFs originally were in the early 2000s. So, I think it's time for gold to appeal to a wider investor base, and I think digital gold is the way that will happen. So that's going to be one way. Um, in terms of the listed gold products, um, I guess my, my, my recommendation at this time is we have a liquid large gold trust that trades on the Toronto New York exchanges, and uh, it's trading at, I think, a 3 or a 4% discount to the underlying spot price, but it holds underlying physical gold. So you can buy these listed funds and you can get pretty good deals on them compared to the gold price these days. Um, and you mentioned digital gold. Can you just give a little quick little synopsis of that for our viewers that might not know exactly sure. what that is? So digital gold is a blockchain-based digital certificate which reflects ownership at a major vault. And it's not... Um, it's not a figment of someone's imagination. You have that gold sitting at the vault on your behalf, and the blockchain will allow it to trade very rapidly and will allow you to buy it very cost-effectively. So that's going to be a factor in the future. Okay. And do you see that starting to rise in 2019? I think it'll start rising in the next couple of weeks. We have a website launch planned um, that, that should start some bigger volumes coming through for digital gold. Okay, great. Um, and my last question is just kind of a general outlook for the precious metals for 2019. Well, I think we are close to a turning point, and the reasons for that are multiple. Um, first, the sentiment is very poor, and the technicals are pointing to the fact that um, there should be a turnaround soon. Secondly, gold's never been less popular compared to S&P stocks and bonds than it was over the last year, and I think that relationship will break down. I think gold will gain some attraction as an insurance asset. And then thirdly, you know, there's been all this talk about the economy being good. I think that's because of tax cuts and rates being higher, again, they had to normalize sometime. But the real story is going to come out in 2019. Is the economy really that strong? And can the Fed really keep raising rates? We don't think so. We think that uh, inflation's coming back. We think that there's a lot of stresses out there. And we think gold is going to perform well against those stresses. 
Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for taking some time to join me today. Thanks for talking to me. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Yes, you too. And once again, I'm Nicole Rashad with the Investing News Network on the final day of the Minds and Money Conference in Toronto.